What's up guys? Frankie's Free Range Meat, new headquarters. <laughs> we uh, finally got kicked out of the Bronx. They made us leave before July. So uh, found something later last year, ended up uh, getting a lease to own thing on the building. So that was all secured. And I also moved, you know, my personal space and I got something for my guys out here, but we'll talk about that a little later. Today, we're gonna look at the building, show you guys around, at least most of it, because it is way too big. So it's kind of windy and the street is always really busy. I hope the microphone and audio is okay. Uh, these are our two loading docks. Official truck height, you know, no problems with tractor trailers now. The Bronx was always a nightmare, uh, loading and unloading. So we're saving a lot of time just on this. Uh, I got a huge dumpster, still a lot of garbage we're getting rid of. But it's a huge building, guys, huge building. This used to be a grocery store. So we do have a storefront that you guys are gonna see. And here on the other side of the building, there's actually another loading dock. Uh, that gate is not automatic though. And then here we have the entrance, which, you know, needs a little rehab, but if we're not open in the front yet, it's not that big of a deal. We're just doing online stuff. Who really cares? Now, uh, <laughs> this is giving me some bad ideas, you know? Like actually having to open up something to the public, which is a whole nother headache, you know? Customers coming in and out, but you know, everything's here, guys. Everything's here for uh, a grocery store. And We'll talk about the grocery store last and if we're actually going to use it. We might do some pickups, like if you guys are interested in coming here and getting your order, whether it's meat, dairy, or eggs, definitely send me an email, info at frankiesrangemeat.com. But in regards to actually, you know, having a meat market here open to the public, we'll come back in here later and talk about it uh, after I tour you guys the building. Uh, if you're wondering how I was able to afford this, it's in like a very small uh, lower income town in northeastern PA. If you guys are curious about the actual address, hey, place an order on Frankie's Strange Meat. You'll see the return address on the package. Yeah, I feel like we kind of have to open it because this street is so busy despite um, this not being the highest income area. But everything's here, guys. They got like a cold sandwich thing, deli counter. You could put the meat in there. But this was a grocery store, so they had everything. You know, they had all fresh produce, a lot of, a lot, a lot of stuff, all the shelving, and there's even more in the back. So I'll show you guys the grocery portion first. Again, deli, some prep stuff was back here, some sinks, all the deli stuff, all the grocery store stuff, more shelves back here for products. That's the warehouse, which we'll show you guys. And here is more of the grocery store. So this is actually a huge freezer back here. That's not currently hooked up, probably cost another few thousand to hook that up. Uh, this was like a lot of dry goods and we're currently using this as our shipping area because there is air conditioning hooked up in here. So that's Frankie's Free Range Foods, Frankie's Free Range Foods, uh, miscellaneous packing stuff. And then we got organ supplements, Wi-Fi shielding and Frankie's Naturals all in this corner over here. So it's nice to have this uh, shelving uh, from the grocery store instead of using all the Metro shelving. In here is just some storage, and this is where that other loading dock is. So right now we have our water in here, Mountain Valley Fuji, some extra Wi-Fi shielding stuff, some glass bottles I was going to do coconut oil in, extra organ supplements inventory. I think there's our banana paste back there for the bars, and uh, some jars and just extra storage. We got the beef tallow over here. This is our old fridge. I might sell this. I don't know what to do with it yet. I'll show you guys the exciting stuff first. So the meat room and the fridge and freezer. Again, this is an older building, so it's not super nice. Yes. So my guys in here are prepping some meat right now. That's the fridge. This is uh, cleaning stuff, sink area. We got some temporary uh, electric burners over there before we put the gas burners in. Uh, just some stuff we have to clean up still and organize over here. That's the electrical panel room. This is the bar maker, hot water heater. We got some storage stuff over here. More like cutting supplies and stuff over here. Cooking stuff. 
This is where the uh, ovens are gonna go. We still have the electrician hooking this stuff up. And then we have our bandsaw vacuum sealer, which we don't really use that much. So this is our fridge. Way too big. We got eggs in here, guys. Please buy some eggs before the Amish tie me up and throw eggs at me all day. Some milk, dairy, kefir over here. More dairy, some cheeses, more stuff over here, some water that's staying cold, and then some eggs that we have ready to go. But yeah, no, this, this fridge is plenty of plenty of space, plenty of space for stuff. You know, we can put it high up here too if we need to. Yeah, I'll show you guys the meat room more when we get everything set up, but I mean, you know, we pressure wash this floor like three times. Just needs new epoxy to look nice, but we're on a budget right now. So they put these doors in when they originally did the place, which is nice and easy to open them. Because I just pull this and the freezer opens. It's a lot louder in here than the old freezer was, but at least it's not loud outside because everything is on the roof and outside instead of being in here. But no, I mean, you could put so much meat in here up on all these shelves, up on this. The whole top part, we don't have anything right now. Most of our meat is just down here. We put some metro shelving in here. All of our milk crates are in the freezer now. A lot of milk crates. And then we just have some more meat and stuff over here that we still have to organize. Probably put some of it on the shelves up here. Now th this closes from this side too. So the doors close automatically. The, uh, the doors on this side are the only ones that aren't working automatically yet. And when we come out this side of the freezer, we're in the warehouse. So, you know, we've swept this, tried to clean it up as good as possible for the most part, but a uh, warehouse is kind of hard sometimes. Uh, we're still working on fixing the this door to open, but the freezer is huge, guys. It's huge. Goes to the roof. So right now in here is mostly our styrofoam coolers. So we got all our cooter. So we got all our coolers. <laughs> Almost said cooters, guys. If only we had a lot of cooters in here, then I wouldn't be losing my mind. That's a, an old exhaust fan in the corner there. Uh, maybe we could put a smoker over there. I don't know. I want to put a smoker in here and start doing sausages. But really, it's just shipping supplies in here. Uh, we could fit more, I think, to the ceiling cardboard styrofoam more cardboard some pallets some of you guys were complaining about the smoke alarms going off i found most of them and now the ones that are going off are on the ceiling you guys can see it right here the smoke alarm and i asked the former owner hey how do i get up to change those what do i need like a, a lift and he goes no you just take the forklift Put the pallets on it, sit on the pallets, and have someone bring it. Dude is nuts if you think I'm gonna go 30 feet up in the air to change those smoke alarms on that ancient forklift, dude. Maybe I'll end up doing that, I don't know. Sounds like a, a severe OSHA violation. So we got some extra pallets over here. Uh, this is a conveyor belt. Uh, I'll show you guys what this is for when we go back over there later. These are our loading docks. Some more coolers over here old electric forklift it's nice it works maybe it needs a new battery in a little bit but we don't really use this much uh, we mostly do uh hand jacking and i might get some electric pallet jacks still have a bunch of stuff we have to throw out the uh the old owner just got most of his stuff out uh this weekend this used to be like a 
place where the delivery guy could come in, buzz him in, and then he, you would uh, load his stuff. Uh, these are dock levelers, so when the truck backs up, uh, we lift these up and they go out on the truck and it's just a straight shot on and off the truck, so it's nice and easy. But everything's working. Originally, the freezer wasn't up and running and a lot of the HVAC stuff didn't work. I ended up getting about a $40,000 loan from the bank uh, to get everything fixed in here, uh, the electrical and the, the freezer stuff. This is our scale for the ice, we gotta move it. So yeah, this is what you guys saw earlier, the path down here. Guys, stay, watch the whole thing. I'll talk about this later. This is the exciting stuff. So there's a hatch in the ceiling here somewhere. I always forget where it is. Is it in this room? Yeah, okay, here it is. So this hatch, you know, you go upstairs and you lift that off and you put the conveyor belt here and you can store a lot of stuff. There's some space up there I'll show you guys. So I was planning on putting a lot of this stuff, getting the conveyor belt set up and putting it up there and then we'll have all this emptied out for even more storage. However, I don't know how expensive that conveyor belt is gonna to be to set up, so we might not do it. So these doors are supposed to stay closed most of the time, especially because we got the AC running. Uh, this is the old compressor HVAC system for the grocery store. It hasn't, I mean, obviously needs some TLC, it needs to be cleaned up. It hasn't been running for a few years now, but it should work. So when we do decide to open the grocery store, we're gonna to have to get this thing back up and running uh, to get everything cold in there. All the deli counters, all the produce counters, this is some stuff that was left here. Uh, might get rid of this, might not. Still have to unpack some of our tools. So this is basically the only bathroom in the whole place. There's two more upstairs that need a little TLC that are somewhat operating. So this is the only reason I wasn't sure about opening to the public in the future, if there's only this bathroom back here, but I guess it wasn't an issue for them. Some old lockers. I don't know, I might cut these, clean them up and use it. Steel coat hanger, dude, I wonder, like, I can't throw this stuff out. This stuff probably costs you $200 new. Everything's so expensive. So coming from the back of the grocery store into these doors uh, is gonna be my office and some other offices. So uh, this is where I have my stuff set up. We kept most of the old stuff, like furniture wise, but all my computer stuff and for the most part's new. I still gotta get the old internet guy in here to show me what he set up because like some of this stuff isn't mine and the security camera system and everything was already in here. So I still haven't, you know, cleaned a lot of this stuff out yet and thrown most of it out. And, and same with this stuff here. I got to figure out what I should and shouldn't get rid of. But I mean, obviously, you know, place needs a lot of TLC. A bit of an understatement. We haven't used these rooms back here yet. Uh, I might do some organ supplement stuff in here. And then there's another office back here with some stuff. So I don't know what I'm gonna use this for yet because even if we open a grocery store up front or meat market, I don't think I'm really gonna need this space that much, but we'll see, we'll see what happens. Um, so this goes down to the electrical panel and kind of, I'm not really gonna show you guys that. It's just basically a basement with a lot of electrical panels. There's nothing down there interesting, uh, but we open this door which is kind of confusing because my office is right there and there's this door here again. And then we have upstairs here. So this is basically a lot of storage. Maybe the most boring part of the tour, I don't know. I think new things are always exciting. So this doesn't go anywhere. That opening to the roof is closed. There's a lot of space up here. So this is one old bathroom. And then this is another old bathroom. The pipe actually burst in here, uh, over there. So we shut the water off to this bathroom. So this is a pretty big room. I would say it's the equivalent to the size of a, you know, a very large bedroom. There's nothing in there. It's just like a, 
closet or something. And then in here, this is that room above where I was showing you guys the uh, conveyor belt goes up to. So you lift these off the floor and you can conveyor belt everything up in here. You can store a lot of stuff up here. Uh, <laughs> the old owner's kid was skating, so. I was gonna have him take this apart for me, but there's so many screws in here, dude. Oh my God, there's gotta be a few hundred screws in this thing. I don't know, this would probably take me at least a few hours to take apart. Yeah, they put plenty of screws in that thing. I don't know, maybe I should learn to skate. You guys can watch me break my neck. These are the other parts to the conveyor belt. So everything just comes up here and you, and you can store stuff up here. So we might need the storage, but you know, who knows if it'll cost us two or 3,000 to, uh, to get that conveyor belt set up because it's not currently operating. So this overlooks the grocery store. This is definitely not the safest feeling thing to stand on. Um, there's like a, I think you can go up this way too. There's a door down there. Uh, there's a door down there. And then this is the grocery store and stuff. So maybe when I lose my mind and I can jump off this and I don't think it's high enough to go off me though. So go figure. So pretty cool, pretty cool. You gotta be careful with all this old stuff in these bolts because sometimes you put a lot of pressure to close these things. You get your hand caught or cut yourself open really easily. Like that. I'm probably gonna cry when I get the electric bill for this place. All right, so turn everything off. Turn the lights off. Going back downstairs. I think we've actually showed you guys everything already. You know, we haven't gone into crazy detail. So this is a little area overlooking the grocery store. Like these chairs and stuff, probably get rid of, they're old, they're dirty. This desk doesn't look that bad, just needs to be cleaned up. Most of this crap, like, probably just throw it out. I gotta go through it. This is like another counter area. Yeah, so here is that other door that's down here. So this is that staircase that goes up to that balcony. And in here is the hot water heater for the sink that's over here, uh, which is actually leaking. So the plumber is gonna come back and fix that. I guess now we have to talk about the front of the grocery store. What's the deal, Frank? What's the deal? So we'll give you guys another look at the front grocery store before we talk about it. Tile looks okay. I think it could be presentable if it's just polished up and made new. I don't know if I would actually use these checkout registers. If I'm just doing a meat market, I might put like a small one here at the front where people can check out. This used to be for produce, and I don't know if we're going to do produce, but we'll see. Yeah, these are, these are probably so expensive to put in. Just some old bread shelving. This is pretty good for stuff. This is a door to the outside. Uh, by the loading docks. More shelving in the middle here. This was a another refrigerated thing. That that big old looking dirty machine in that room. That's what cools all these. Old fax machine got to get rid of. Yeah, huge refrigerated tray for meat or whatever. Cooler box. Then we have some other stuff. We haven't really used this at all because the pipe's leaking over there so the water isn't hooked up. But we have a nice triple basin sink. This used to be a refrigerator, it's just a storage cabinet now. Uh, this is like an old plastic wrap machine that needs to be cleaned really badly. Some shelves in here, there's a gas line here so you can put a stove here, but you know, running gas lines out here isn't that expensive. Sink. There were some cutting tables back here for the deli, but we moved them over to the meat room to use them ourselves. There's still fucking water leaking from a pipe somewhere. I turn the water off to, uh, I turn the water off to it, but now I don't know what to do because water's still coming out, but it's not that bad of a leak. So we'll just have to wait until the plumber comes next week. 
This is filthy too, but this is where they had the extra meats for the uh, the deli. And then this is like deli sandwiches and prepared foods and, and cold stuff. Man, you guys get to see what I actually look like without the camera two feet in front of my face. <laughs> hey, for better or worse. So this is, you know, a small town. I wouldn't necessarily say lower income area, but you know, I mean, me coming from New York, I never really knew how small towns were. I had a general idea, but you know, if you go to the grocery stores in this area or the places, food quality is out the window. It's not really considered. People care a lot about price and budget. Now, if this all wasn't already set up for me, I wouldn't consider it. It would be out of the question, but since it's all set up and more importantly, this is so busy, this street, this is insane. It's like even 9, 10 a.m. on a Sunday, I can count 10, 20, 30 cars coming by every minute, minimum. The amount of just vehicle traffic here, you know, probably tens of thousands of cars throughout the week. It's a very, very high traffic area. So regardless of what I open here, if I just put a sign up front, whatever I'm selling, it's a no brainer. It's a no brainer. However, do I want to do that now with the online stuff? You know, it's not a zero startup cost. There's still a lot of things I would have to do. Plus having customers come in, having to hire completely new staff and, and have people in and out. And it's a big headache, but I wouldn't be able to really sell my stuff here. You know, maybe I could have like a small grass fed section in the freezer, but for the most part, I'd have to <laughs> bring in some great A Angus prom beef. Frankie's selling the corn feds, the good stuff. <laughs> How funny would it be? How funny would that be if I had to do that? I'm, I'm thinking, I don't really want to do that, so I'm thinking about it. But that, that's what I would have to do. We'd have to bring in some great A Angus prom beef for the boy. <laughs> um, no, because like if I go to the grocery stores around here and look at everything, it's just regular meat, you know, pork and chicken being sold for like two, three, four dollars a pound, depending on the cut, like dirt, cheap, conventional meats. So even if this place was super busy, would I really make a lot of money doing something like that? I don't know. It, it might not be worth it. I might just be better off sticking to the online stuff, which I'm going to do for now because I, I have so many things that I'm trying to do just in the next few months uh, for, you know, Frankie Strange, me, Frankie Strange Foods, organ supplements. I got a lot of new products and new ideas that I'm investing my time and money into for that. So maybe when we outgrow this place or maybe when I have some free time or a lot of capital, then I can consider opening the storefront. But because it's gonna be a different product selection, you know, I'm basically having to run two businesses out of here. I'd have to have like a separate group of, of meat guys to do the meats for this place. Uh, so, so I'm thinking about it, I'm thinking about it. But it's just such a high traffic area, you know? You get so many people in here, but how, how, much, how much can you sell? What is each person gonna spend 20, 30 bucks? How much are you gonna make off that? How many people do you have to get in here? You know, how, how much staff am I gonna have to hire, the employees, I'm gonna have to worry about that stuff, so. Here's the idea though, here's the idea. This is the pitch, this is my business idea, so. Most of it, we keep probably, most of it we keep. Most of the setup's gonna be the same, it's gonna be minimal investment. I think, right. minimal investment, but I'm not going to run a grocery store. I want to do a meat market. But, you know, if you just do a deli, if you just do a meat market, if you just do a restaurant, you don't get a lot of people in here. I think if I do deli and meat over there and have a burger and fries stand too, where we could do like best burger or something and have people come in, they get a burger and fries for lunch. Maybe they pick up some meat, some sandwiches too. I think I could get a lot of people in here if we do those three things. If it was just meats and deli i'm not really sure how busy it would be but if i can get people to come in here like all these people coming by maybe they're hungry for lunch come in and have a burger maybe that's possible the issue is how would i set all this up so you know this this i would probably turn into the checkout counter this can probably stay here we could put some sandwiches in here 
the deli would be in the same spot. Oh my God, what is that leaking? I gotta find out where that's coming from. Cause that was not here yesterday. Anyway. Yeah, so all the deli stuff would be in here. I would put the meats here, beef, pork, and chicken. I'm not sure if that's enough space for the meats. I didn't really want to do the burger stuff back here, and I think we might need the space for the deli. So I'm not 100% sure on that yet. Uh, plus, he was saying that we'd have to, like, put in some really expensive uh, range hood if we wanted to fry stuff back here. Technically, we could put the meats over here, and in that case, over there too. However, um, you know, he was telling me, like, you got to really keep an eye out on people with how much uh, people are stealing from restaurants and grocery stores now. So I didn't want theft to be a concern. So I figured if we just put all of the meat and stuff in the case, then people just choose it and have it, and it'd be very difficult to kind of steal it. So what we would do is remove these shelves from the middle of the grocery store, probably put some seating here we'd partition this off so probably put a wall from that door put a wall here and closing it off down to there so basically just having deli meats over here and i wanted to put a burger stand in the corner there the issue is you know it's not like over there where it's all set up already maybe we could still use the existing refrigeration to keep all the stuff back there and then just build the burger stand in front. Uh, I just don't know how much it's gonna cost to to run some gas. I, I don't think it's even possible. I think it would be too crazy to run gas lines and plumbing and put a burger stand up front here. However, I would not want to open this meat market up without the burgers. Like I don't, where's this water coming from, dude? Where's it coming from? fucking everywhere that pipe's fucking dripping again but i turned that water off the problem is the fucking water heater's full it wasn't all right i'll have to call up the it's the holiday week too so i don't know when this guy's gonna come anyway i'm not really sure yet uh, i don't know what the startup cost would be just to do the meats and the deli honestly i think it would only be a few thousand dollars whatever it costs to get the a cooler machine in the back there up and running and then we can basically just uh, put up a wall partition this off and just do meats and deli the burger stuff look if it's going to cost me 20 thirty thousand to get a little burger shack set up here look it's it's probably worth it it's just i i can invest 20 thirty thousand in, in other business stuff right now and then additionally you know even though the startup cost to get this up and running isn't that much uh, hiring the staff and, and buying the product inventory is a pretty big commitment. And since I, I currently don't work with suppliers that would sell this quality of meat, you know, the, the former owner does have, a, uh, he supplies foods to restaurants. So I can technically just get all the meat and all the deli stuff from him for this place, which I probably would. It's just, you know, I don't want to get this up and running and then only be making like, you know, a thousand bucks a week. That would, that would be a huge, huge headache to have that. But we'll see. We'll see. I'm, I'm not holding my breath yet. Uh, but guys, let me see if I can fix this pipe or something. Get it tight because it's a holiday weekend. And uh, I don't know when the plumber is going to be able to come. It was not leaking this bad yesterday. Anyway, thank you guys for joining. Uh, you can check out frank-stefano.com. If you'd like to support me through all my businesses, we got Frankie's Range Meat, Frankie's Range Foods, Organ Supplements, Wi-Fi Shielding, Frankie's Naturals. Uh, if there's any point in time that you guys, if you guys can support me, it would be, you know, these next few months into next year before we get a little better situated. Maybe I'll show you guys my house too. I don't know if this video gets enough views and enough likes. I'll show you guys my new house, but maybe not. Guys, one very important note on me actually selling the Friday Angus prom beef. Although I wouldn't be too happy about it. At least it would be fresher and higher quality than the other stores around here that are selling the same stuff so there's a plus there's there's a benefit at least i'm providing people with you know fresh or higher quality food and then if we did do the burger restaurant even though you know not everything's going to be organic and the best quality 
I'm going to make sure not to use vegetable seed oils and any of that stuff. So, you know, lesser of the evils.